putting data to work for your brand. Now this is Thoughtful. Hello, I'm Clement Sang in Shanghai. Marketers face a challenging media environment, greater demand for accountability, and slowing economic growth rates, all of which create headaches when it comes to media planning. What can marketers do to solve this issue? We're joined in our studio today by a leader in this area, Frederick Zhouf, Managing Director for Asia Pacific at Axiom. Frederick, thanks for coming in today. Let's start off by looking at the fragmented media, the business market, and the different behavior of the Chinese markets from tier to tier. What are some of the solutions that you see today? Well, I think the key today is really about being able to link online and offline information because uh, companies are managed by silos and breaking the silos is the way to get the consumer perspective and that's what makes a difference today. So what's working, what isn't working right now for some of your, the clients that you see? I think what is working is really the, the ability to take a consumer perspective and the ability to to close the loop between the top of the funnel about awareness that is often done through digital channel and the bottom of the funnel, the retention that is done through CRM and linking those two together is the, the solution. That's why we launched, uh, recently launched uh, the audience operating system, which is exactly achieving that objective. And do you think there's a fulcrum between soft sales plus a merging technologies through mobile e-commerce, creating the environment to, to pressure advertisers to change the way they deal with data? Well, I, I think that today there is a huge pressure. I mean, if you take it from the consumer perspective, consumers are bombarded with more than 1,000 messaging a day, and most of that messaging today is irrelevant, and it creates a lot of consumer frustration, and it creates a lot of wastage for advertisers. And on the publisher side, then, they don't have the way to develop a healthy business. So there, the opportunity is really to be able to link the information about consumer into one unique view and to be able to action that into one-to-one -one marketing at scale so that you really get to the consumer the message they want. And at the end, that's what makes marketing efficient. And what are some of the challenges and barriers that are preventing the advertiser creating the momentum needed to take on this change? Well, I think the barriers, there are some legacy barriers. Uh, companies are organized by silos. Uh, there were some technology barriers. Uh, the technology was not there to enable that. There were some privacy constraints uh, because uh, you're talking about linking some of the information that is anonymous, some of the information that is identified. So up to now, there was no really a way to make that possible at scale. Uh, and so uh, that, that's today what technology makes possible. That's what we try to achieve through the AOS. And, that, and if you take some examples of marketers that have done that, I mean, if you take in the e-commerce field, if you look at the success of Suning, uh, this success comes by the fact that they've linked their online and offline strategy very much in an integrated manner compared to other players that try to push e-commerce but being afraid to, uh, to impact their offline business and they don't go anywhere where uh, companies like Sunin that take the lead in linking online and offline and not being afraid of being consumer friendly in their value proposition, they make a difference in the market. So you think for latecomers who have no brand heritage, do you think it's a distinct advantage for them to start with a clean slate? Well, I think that in general, China is in a way a, a clean state compared to other, uh, other markets. Uh, so we see a lot of leapfrogging in, in this market. Uh, and and there, there are already some head start. I think that there, the ecosystem was a bit uh, more blocked in China. Uh, this is changing and what is changing is the growth of mobile. I mean, if you take the usage of social network, which is a prime usage of internet today, uh, more than 70% of social network usage is through mobile phone. Uh, and in mobile phone, uh, there is no way you can play a share of voice game. You can only play a one-to-one. -one. So, Today is really about being able to deliver those targeted messages to, to consumers. So 2013 being the year of the big data, um, is it more than about managed data? And what's the first priority task for a marketer that you think they should really focus on for 2014? Well, I think yeah, big data is very hype. At the core of that is, again, the understanding of the consumer uh, and, and being capable of uh, first linking all the information so that you have a single customer view. Then second, being able to derive insight because raw data has absolutely zero value. 
it's being able to derive those insights. And then the third point that often people forget is the ability to project those insights to publishers. So the ability to distribute your segment uh, through DSP, the ability to link uh, directly with publishers, like we do, for example, with publishers like Sina in China. That's what makes the difference because the information that you extract from the data, you are then able to project to the ecosystem and therefore get the business results. Now that we've talked about big data, about managed data, what are some of the challenges and mistakes that marketers have faced in terms of attribution and media management? Well, I think attribution is the golden grail. I think that's the first question that the CMO asks me when I meet them. Where should I put my money? <laughs> so that's the end result of what you want to achieve. I think the trap that some marketers are following is to spending a lot of money in attribution but without the ability to act on it. And, and for me, the key is really not only to get the measurement, also, but also the possibility to act on it. So that's what we do. So for, for AOS, what we do is provide the measurement and the data so that the marketers and their agencies have the basis to make informed decisions and not to make guess around attribution. And again, by closing the link between offline and online, that's where you can get the real measurement. Because the reality is today, still 90% of the conversion is done offline. So if you just play an online game in attribution, uh, you have a very, very siloed measurement. So being able to close the loop between online and offline sales is really a very big differentiator in terms of value you get from attribution. And so how does Axiom then work with agencies to close that loop? Well, we, we provide agencies the, 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 the data to, uh, to support their work. And, and, and in a lot of situations, we bring to them data that they never access to because uh, the data that the marketers have is siloed. And, and, and with AOS, we link those data together and provide a unique view through the application. So uh, depending on the marketer's will, then the agency is able to access those data and use that for, for their modeling and other activities that, that they can run to, to support their decision. So obviously when we start talking about tracking consumers, the big question is about privacy and about cookies and about Google and Microsoft's global movement towards no cookie based tracking. Well, what is your position and what is the solution behind this potential question? First, I think it's not about tracking consumers. It's about delivering the right messaging to the consumers. And how do you deliver the right messaging? Uh, traditionally online has relied on, on a cookie approach. The big problem is that Cookie never bought anything, only people buy things. So what we are able to do is, in addition of having the ability to serve the right messaging for, for cookies, is also the ability to do in a privacy compliant PI matching, so matching personal information directly with publishers. So we do that with historically with international publishers, so we do uh, we have a server server to connection with, with Facebook, we, we match with international publisher. But now we also make that possible in China. Uh, with publisher like Sina, we are able to match the marketer's data with uh, the publisher data. And we are able to deliver that personalized messaging without necessarily relying on, on cookies. So is that capability then bridging both on a device basis where you can actually profile a PC and a mobile and a tablet user as well? Well, this is to be able to do it at the individual level. So I think that there are often three levels of targeting. I mean, his historically, if you can speak about history about the digital world, it was all about the cookie. Uh, and then from cookie, we realized the limitation of cookie tracking. So then people tried to move to the device. But look how many devices we have. We have several mobile phones, we have several tablets, we have several PC. So one individual may have 24 devices. So it's still not enough. The real ability to drive targeted messaging is to go down to the individual level. And that's what you do by linking the CRM information that you have with the online information. And that's empower both sides. I mean, that, that's really power the whole ecosystem and really make marketers being able to leverage the digital world the way it should be. Uh, if you look at how digital channels have been used up to now, very much they have just been used like a traditional channel. It's not the power of digital. And that's what is creating this insatisfaction from consumers. So the opportunity today is really to deliver a consumer friendly. As an industry, we have often in your consumers, I think it's time to put the consumers at the center of what we do. And do you think marketers are putting enough resources to make this realization occur in 2014? I think there is an increasing emphasis. I think there is a, 
I think across industries, we see uh, a disintermediation of, of the middleman and we see a direct to consumer approach. It's true for insurance, but it's also true for CPG. We, we see CPG companies that are taking a, a very direct to consumer approach because they realize that otherwise they will become a commodity and the, the whole value will be from key digital player, whether they are Tencent of the world or the Google of the world in the Western world, uh, they would be the winner. So for, for advertisers, there is an urgency to make the move to take a direct-to-consumer approach because otherwise they will be commoditized. So you think in three years' time, the market will have settled and this AOS vision will, will come to fruition? I mean, we see a huge, uh, a huge response uh, from, from the industry and from marketers around AOS because it's fulfilling the dream of many and, and suddenly it makes it possible at scale in a privacy and, and compliant way. So I think that the ecosystem has already started to change, marketing is changing and, and, and the overall cycle is accelerating. So I, I, I see really a huge acceleration and you can see that even the last 18 months if you took a look at online advertising in China there has already been some dramatic changes. Frederick thanks for being on Thoughtful China. That wraps it up for today be sure to subscribe to us on Yoku, Tudo and YouTube. You can also follow us on Weibo and Twitter and join our LinkedIn group. See you again.